Masters of Time, supremely talented individuals who create unique timepieces. Unaffiliated with any manufacturer, they are known as the independent watchmakers. It's hard to believe, but aside from the springs, these watches are made entirely of wood. Each one consists of many different types of wood, in fact. This is Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. Inside this suburban apartment, careful handiwork is turning simple wood into works of art. It all happens at this small workbench, tucked into the corner of the kitchen. It's the modest atelier of independent watchmaker Valery Danovich. Unusually for a watchmaker, his background is actually in furniture making. But over the years, he mastered the art of watchmaking all by himself. He has an extremely delicate touch, which is a must because wood snaps easily. This cog measures four millimeters in diameter. One by one, Danovich carefully carves out each groove. This painstaking work shows why it takes six to 12 months to complete a single watch. This is nostalgia. Danovich made his name with this watch. The case and band are made of birch. It all weighs an unassuming 17 grams. The world's first wooden tourbillon emits a gentle ticking sound. This mother-of-pearl sculpture of a lady is about three millimeters high. In 2014, Danovich unveiled a new watch, West India. The dial features an elaborate mosaic. 115 tiny wooden pieces were painstakingly assembled to depict a galleon in full sail on the open seas. I was drawn to watchmaking by the idea of making something small, not large. Something intricate rather than simple. The more complex a task is, the more I want to undertake it. Ukraine is a land of wood. Forests once covered half the country. People made their homes and daily utensils out of wood. Danovich comes from a long line of furniture makers. He's loved forests since he was a child and grew up surrounded by their bounty. Most of the wood in his watches comes from local forests. Sometimes I walk 50 kilometers in a day to find the right wood. And if I don't find it, that's no big deal. There's nothing better than a walk in the forest. When he does find something, Danovich dries it. 
Then he decides which type of wood best suits each watch component. For example, this movement is made of 154 parts and uses eight different kinds of wood. These large cogs, which wind springs, are made of African blackwood. This wood is also used for walking sticks. It's hard and quite sticky, so it helps the cogs mesh together stably. The crown is made of Australian guaiacum wood. It contains natural lubricants that prevent it from wearing down with use. The dial face features the beautiful hues of apple and walnut trees. A variety of other woods rounds out the aesthetic of the richly colored design. Danovich's extensive knowledge of wood and his experience as a furniture maker helped him become the world's only creator of wooden watches. This is retrograde. It could be called his masterwork. In addition to the tourbillon, it also features another mechanical complication. The hand clicks back every hour. It's what's known as a retrograde function. This complicated mechanism is difficult to construct even with metal. So it's astonishing this wooden watch features not one, but two complications. Experts have valued it at around $200,000. I think all mechanical watches are, to say, works of art. You need a very high level of skill to create a mechanism so tiny, yet so precise. Wooden watches are also made from trees, a living material. So I believe they are living things. Tuan in northwestern Switzerland. The lakeside village is renowned for wine. Abundant vineyards blanket its slopes. This is where independent watchmaker Thomas Prasher works. He is known as the master of tourbillons. This pocket watch was his first creation. He made it while studying at a watch school. The tourbillon can be found inside. At the time, it was said only a few of the most accomplished watchmakers could make tourbillons. However, pressure had mastered this daunting task. For me, it's, it's the heartbeat of a watch, and there's no better way to, to guide the attention of, of, a, of a watch fan to this heartbeat than to use a tourbillon. So it's a bit like the, the small boy's dream of a red car. Pressure was entranced by tourbillons. He worked to create more intricate and beautiful versions culminating in an entirely new mechanism. The world's first flying triple-axis tourbillon. The timekeeping balance wheel moves in three dimensions, using three axes. 
The first axis rotates the balance wheel. The second rotates the axis that suspends the wheel in mid-air. And the third rotates the small platform attached to the second axis. It measures just 13 millimeters. This magical creation is like a floating sculpture. Pressure's invention helped tourbillons evolve from two to three dimensions. I synchronize some of the axes, or two of the axes at least, in, in my, my case, one minute, one minute. That becomes a quite regular, very calm motion, like, like a feather in the wind. And uh, so it, it was to have, the, the idea was to have uh, a kinetic sculpture, finally. However, it took pressure an entire year to make this mechanism. The hardest challenge was adjusting the balance. With tourbillons, if the left and right weight is even slightly off balance, it won't rotate cleanly. Triple axis tourbillons need to be balanced perfectly in four directions though. Up, down, left and right. This involves adjustments on the micro level. Tourbillons weigh less than three grams and the smallest screw weighs one thousandth of a gram. Even the slightest turn of this tiny screw can affect the balance of the tourbillon. Everyone told pressure a triple axis tourbillon was impossible. For this kind of mechanism there is no calculation uh, rule because it's the first time ever made. So it's a lot of trial and error. You go backwards, adjust, adjust, adjust. So after a certain time, the triple axis was ready in, in development, and then I, I just made it. Pressure developed his tenacious and indomitable spirit during his youth. Before he started making watches, he spent six years in the German Navy. He says this tough training on sailboats and submarines laid the foundation for his career as a watchmaker. Giving up is no option. Because if you are on the ocean, for example, it starts a fire, you cannot call the police or the, the fire police. You have to solve the problem. And this training to systematically training not to give up, to solve the problems, uh, to be efficient also, um, to make good decisions in super difficult situations. This gives you um, a red line for, for the life. Pressure utilizes his naval experience in unexpected ways when watchmaking. This is a new project he's working on. But it doesn't appear to be a watch at first glance. What could it be? It's actually a submarine wristwatch. The engine is, of course, a flying tourbillon. This keeps time in the center of the submarine and acts as the driving force. The two tubes on the sides show the hour and minute. The crown lies underneath the submarine's hatch. It's a design that bursts with imagination and a sense of fun. One of the biggest challenges in, in my watchmaking life. It's comparable with the with the triple axis thing. I think that will be a very interesting piece of art finally. The submarine is still hollow inside. When it's finished, what kind of voyage through time will it take us on? <laughs> 